What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host, Avery, here, and I am bringing you this top eight deck profile from the Luxury Gaming Tournament that just happened a couple days back. And believe it or not, this is actually the same build that topped another event. It may have been another Luxury Gaming event. Uh, four, four and a half weeks ago-ish. It may have been piloted by the same person. I, I checked out the guy that played it, and... Uh, he topped with this exact same build, and this same build topped four weeks ago, so I can only assume it's the same person. Um, but I wanted to talk about this build, because this would actually be what I would be playing if real-life events were back. If you don't know, I don't do remote duels. There's not even any remote duels in my area, and I wouldn't do them anyway. But this build is so incredibly good, and I am so impressed by how good and consistent it actually is. So... Without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get into the deck profile. I tried to find the guy that top eight with this um, at the luxury game tournament that just happened. I tried to find him on YouTube, and I, I couldn't find like an actual in-person profile or anything. So we're just going to have to kind of go with it. I feel like I've sort of figured out the choices for the most part, but regardless, let's just go ahead and dive right into it because this deck is just absolutely bananas. So... Um, we are playing the one of Cyframe Driver along with the three Gamma. Uh, it's it's broken. We're playing three Nibiru. Uh, we're also playing one Fleur de Lis, one Dogmatica Ashian, one Maximus, and then the two Ecclesia for our Dogmatica engine. Then for our Shadals, we're playing one Beast, two Squamata, one Hedgehog, three Windy, one Nay Shadal Ariel, and then of course we're also playing the Evoked engine with two Alistair. And then to round off our hand traps, we're playing the two Ash Blossom. The monster lineup, very, very solid. I really found no issues with this. Um, you can side things out, like even the Wendy's, uh, in order to, you know, kind of make your deck a little bit more flexible, like with the Artifact Engine or with the Shadal Dragon. You just take out a Wendy and throw this in, and then you have a Shadal that can pop back row during the opponent's turn. For the spells, we're playing Triple Dis Nadir, I almost called it Disciple of the uh, Nadir, Nadir Servant. Two Triple Tactics Talent. I love this card so much. When it goes off, it's just so good. So damn good. You don't need three. Three seems really cloggy in this deck. And uh, just at two, it, it seems to work perfectly. We're playing three Shadal Fusion, two Invocation, and one El Shadal Fusion, along with three Meltdown, one Punishment, and one Ruck, rounding off the spells and traps. Uh, Shadal Fusion really doesn't get used that much, at least for me personally. I mostly use it just as discard fodder uh, in order to uh, use Makaba, or I use it as discard fodder for like any other monster effect, or if I really need to for Apocalone. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can use this card. If you end up going second with the deck, the opponent has like, let's say, a Link Monster on board, you can of course use the Shadal Fusion to make a Fusion Monster. Um, invocation, if you don't have a Shadal Fusion spell in your hand, remember that you can use Invocation to summon any Fusion Monster. So you can use it to bring out like Construct or Winda. I've done that plenty of times. Uh, for the extra deck, now I should say the guy that topped eight with um, this build was playing one All Mirage, one Gravity Controller, and one, or uh, I'm sorry, one All Mirage, one Secure Gardener, and one Gravity Controller. Um, I am instead playing Dragon Master Knight, one, because I never made Gravity Controller, and two, it's one of my favorite fusion monsters, because obviously we can't make Dragon Master Knight, but what you can do is that you can use Dogmatica Punishment. If the opponent plays out a Master of Zoo Beasts, whatever the hell it's called, uh, you can activate the Dogmatica Punishment and just send Dragon Master Knight to pop their 3,000 attack Zoo Beast. This has actually come up several times. Um, there have been times where the opponent will play out uh, a Master of Zoo Beasts, whatever the hell it's called, Master of the Jungle, I don't know. <laughs> um, and without having the Dragon Master Knight, the Dogmatica Punishment is dead, because really all the opponent has to do, typically, is get a monster out with basically 2600 attack, or really 2550 or more, and then your Dogmatica Punishment is dead. However, with Dragon Master Knight, it's always going to be live, because they're not going to have a monster that they bring out with more than 5000. There's just no way, unless it like gets a boost on summon, which... I mean, if the opponent's playing some sort of card that that's over 5,000 attack on, like, a summon or something, and you can't interrupt it, 
then you're losing the game at that point. So Dragon Master Knight is just a fusion monster that you can dump to ensure you can pop any one monster. Um, I was actually playing against Dragon Link yesterday, and he was playing a Blue Eyes engine, and he brought out a Blue Eyes, uh, and I had no way to get rid of it other than Dogmatica Punishment, so I used it to dump the Dragon Master Knight to pop his Blue Eyes, and he immediately conceded. So this does come up from time to time i never made gravity controller i like it a lot more than gravity controller you could also use cyber and dragon if you wanted to i just like using dragon master knight because one i think it's cooler and two it's got that extra 1000 attack and i'm just paranoid that with my badass shitty luck that the opponent's going to somehow get out a monster with 4050 or more and then the cyber and dragon is going to be useless for the side deck, we are playing one Scythe, three Lancia, one Dragon, one Feather Duster, two Cyclone, one Call by the Grave, three Artifact Sanctum, two Ice Dragon's Prison, and the one of Red Reboot. Um, against Dryton, it, it can definitely be a toss-up, I've noticed, with this deck. However, if you go first and just sit on the window, the opponent really can't do anything. Um, if Dryton go... Like if you have, let's say, Shadal Ruck set and the the Drytron player starts pop, popping off, the moment that they activate that first Drytron, you just activate the Ruck, you make the window, they make their zero defense 2000 attack Drytron onto the board, and then they're just locked out for their turn. They literally can't do anything else unless they droplet you, and since they have that monster on that on their board, they can't imperm you. So Shadal Ruck into Winda going first against Drytron is really, really good. You really want to use Shadal Ruck kind of um, in response to the opponent trying to special summon. Like, I literally just got done playing Math Mech with this deck. And um, in game one, he tried to activate an effect that would special summon. So I ended up having both Dogmatica Punishment and Shadal Ruck set. And a little kind of cool little combo that you can do you can go Dogmatica Punishment, and when you activate it, targeting the monster is the cost, and then you can chain other cards. So what you can do is go, let's say, Dogmatica Punishment, target an opponent's monster, chain the Shadal Ruck, banish your materials needed for a Winda, the chain resolved backwards, uh, the Punishment pop the Math Mech monster, and then my window was already out on the board, so that lo and behold, the Math Mech player special summoned his monster, and he was locked out for the turn. He couldn't do anything else. So when they activate some sort of effect to special summon, you can chain the Ruck, get out the window, they do their one special summon. Now they're just, they're locked into that one monster. Um, I have yet to really side deck in the Artifact Engine. I have yet to use the Sanctums and the Scythe. Really the only things I've side decked in was the Dragon, which was only once. Uh, the Lancia is mostly in like the Ice Dragon's Prison a couple of times. There really isn't a whole lot in this side deck that you really use. Even going into games two and three, I mean, unless you're playing against some random shit like Stun or Mystic Mind, then yeah, you bring in your one of Red Reboot, your two Cyclones, and your Feather Duster, and you call it a day. Um, but, I mean, even the main deck is just so good as it is, because, I mean, when you look at your hand trap count, you're main decking, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? And if you want to count the Fleur de Lis as one technically, then you're playing nine hand traps? That's really, really good, even in today's meta. Like when this deck originally topped over a month ago, the meta was obviously last format, it was a little bit different, and now that we have Drytron and stuff, you would think it would kind of need to change up a little bit, but not really. Um, there's a lot of things here that just sort of work. Like, there's not really a lot of things that you have to change side deck wise. Again, if you need a dragon, you take out a Windy and you put in a dragon. Um, the fusions are kind of just here, you know, to push you forward more to game to give you more options. I mean, Aga Dice, I hardly ever make. Um, the main ones you really make is Makaba, the Constructs, the Apocalone, the the Windows. Um, the Ents is just so good. I would love to throw in another Ents, um, but there's just no room for it. Purgatrio, you know, it's there if you need the fire type. You don't really ever use it. The Apocalones, you don't really ever summon. You just use them to search for Ruck or any Shadal card that you need. Uh, so that's why you play two of those, and then the two windows, the three construct. I actually made three of these in one game once. It was actually pretty bananas. Uh, the one Augadice, Purgatrio, the Bastard Dragon, and then, of course, the Macabre and the Dragon Master Knight. Uh, the Bastard Dragon, obviously, you never make. You just use it to search at the end of the turn. Something that I like to do with Apocalone is that if I have a dead Shadal monster in my hand, just search for the Ruck, and since the Apocalone the Dark, if you dump it off, let's say, Nadir's Servant, 
uh, once the Apocalone triggers to give you the Rup Ditch, let's say, a Shadal Squamata in your hand to dump a Dragon and draw a card or dump a Wendy to set another Shadal to your field, whatever the situation really calls for. And then if you're dumping, let's say, a Squamata, well then congratulations, you now have two Darks loaded in the graveyard to uh, use your Rup to make a window during the opponent's turn. So it can be both very reactive offensively and defensively. It can brick. There have been plenty of times where... Um, I've just opened like Shadals with like no extenders, like fusions or anything. Uh, it does happen. Uh, like this hand here is is actually pretty solid. Uh, you know, you can go fusion to make construct turn one. That's not terrible. It's not the best hand in the world, but it's certainly not terrible. I mean, opening Nibiru is really good. If you go second with this hand, it's it's really solid. Um, going first with this hand's good because I mean you've gotten a dear servant. Really opening up anything that really allows you to extend into plays is going to be good. This deck really does not break a whole lot. So guys, let me know what you think about this build. Again, it came in top eight of the luxury games tournament, uh, and I'm really liking this build. Again, if there were events, this would be exactly what I'm playing because it's just so damn good and very consistent. I hardly ever brick with it. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.